The purpose of this video is to illustrate the operation of row switching. And actually it's our first example of a linear system where we don't a priori know the solution. So let's discover what it is by Gaussian elimination and along the way deal with row switching. So our first order of business is to eliminate this two. Of course, we will use one as our pivot. And the operation is subtracting two of the first row from the second that multiple two always equals the ratio of this entry to this entry. So all of the other entries just come along for the ride. And it's the relationship between the leading entries, the entry corresponding to the pivot, that determines the multiple. So in this case, the multiple is of course two or minus two if you wanna discuss everything strictly in terms of addition, but we'll use the word subtract. So we're going to subtract two of the first row from the second, giving us zero, zero, one, zero, 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 one, zero. And this zero is a little bit troublesome because this is where we ordinarily expect to see a pivot. But for this system, it's just not in the cards. So one and zero here. Okay, well, we'll deal with this in a moment. Let's proceed with Gaussian elimination and use this pivot to eliminate the three. And of course you do that by subtracting three of this row from the last, giving us zero by design, one, two, minus one. <laughs> zero, one, two, minus one. All right, we would like our next pivot to come from here. But this entry cannot be used as a pivot because pivot cannot be zero. If it is zero, you wouldn't be able to eliminate anything with it. So there are two choices right now. You could use this one as the pivot and start eliminating everything above it in this case. Or you can use this one as a pivot. That's just some of the initial thoughts that you might have. Well, the convention is to have pivots in consecutive rows, which would actually point to this one as our next pivot. But there is an even more important convention, and that is to have pivots, as far as columns are concerned, as early as possible. And that will point to this one as our pivot. And besides the other convention, that pivots should come in consecutive rows, can be satisfied simply by switching rows two and three, which will put this one in this position exactly where we want it. So the rows of the pivots is, are entirely up to us. Because we have the operation of row switching up our sleeve, we can always achieve the situation where the first pivot comes in row one, the second pivot, if available, comes in row two, the third pivot, if available, comes in row three, and so forth. So which rows the pivots occur in is entirely up to us. Which columns the pivots occur in is not entirely up to us, as you will see from the next example. But if we can make it appear earlier, then we should certainly take advantage of that. That's part of the convention in Gaussian elimination. So our next step, so this is our pivot, and our next step is to switch rows one, rows two, and three. So row two will now be one, two, and row three will now be zero, one. So row two is one, two, and row three is zero, one. This is our pivot. Let's now not forget to do the same thing on the left-hand side. I hope I did it correctly. Okay, so now all our pivots are exactly where we want them to be. So let's proceed with Gaussian elimination. And maybe at some point, the relationship of the right-hand side to the columns will become apparent and we won't have to go any further. So at this point, it's almost apparent, just because we see that we may not take any of column three. And from that point on, we can bootstrap what the linear decomposition is. But let's pretend that we're not that good at the bootstrapping method of decomposition and proceed with Gaussian elimination. So here's our pivot, and naturally this is our pivot, and it's actually a very valuable tradition in Gaussian elimination 
to first march from left to right and eliminate everything below the pivots. And then once that is done, to use the pivots and march from right to back to left and eliminate everything above the pivots. Now it need not be done in that order at all. In fact, when you're writing code for Gaussian elimination, it may be easier, although not necessarily better from the point of view of accuracy and so forth, to, for every pivot that you find, to eliminate everything above it and below it, only then move on to the next pivot. So it's up to you. But in our manual exercises, let's adopt the convention that will first march to the right and eliminate everything below the pivots, and then march back to the left, eliminating everything above the pivots. It will actually result in fewer calculations. And these operations, this approach to Gaussian elimination, actually has some terminology associated with it. So the process of marching to the right and eliminating everything below the pivots is called Gaussian elimination. It's the Gaussian elimination part of Gaussian elimination. Uh, bad terminology. So we're actually done with that part of Gaussian elimination. And marching back to the left and eliminating everything above the pivots is called Jordan back substitution for Michael Jordan. Okay, so now that we're done with Gaussian elimination, let's embark on Jordan back substitution. So now one is our pivot with which we'll start eliminating everything above it. So let's first eliminate this two, which is done by subtracting three of row two from, excuse me, three, excuse me, which is accomplished by subtracting two of row three from row two. That will eliminate this two and leave this minus one unchanged because here we have a zero. The next step would be to subtract three of row three from row one. That will eliminate this three, but leave this one unchanged because of this zero. Let's see, is it now obvious what the relationship of the right hand side to the columns of this matrix is? Well, I think it's nearly obvious, but let's just push it, uh, push Gauss elimination, and in this case, Jordan back substitution to the very end, at which point there is no doubt what the relationship is or no hesitation whatsoever. So we will now use this one to eliminate the two and that operation and the operation that will deliver that is subtracting two of row two from row one, which is puts a zero here. And now let's be careful. Subtracting two of row two from row one it's minus two, subtracting two. So it's actually subtracting minus two. Subtracting minus two is the same as adding two. So this is a three. And so now there's absolutely no hesitation of how to represent this column as a linear combination of the columns on the left because these are the perfect columns with respect to which to decompose. And it's also evident that these columns are linearly independent. So the null space is the trivial null space. Which means there would, this, this system will have a unique solution. And that unique solution is of course x, y, z equals 3, negative 1, 0. So not a complicated solution at all, but something because three, as far as I'm concerned, is actually a large number. So this solution was not at all obvious initially when we looked at our initial system, but after performing Gaussian elimination, we transform the system into a form where all of the relationships that we need are absolutely self-evident. So that's Gaussian elimination. And along the line and along the way we had to switch some rows so that all the pivots appear precisely where we want them to appear. Now in the next lesson we will learn that the columns in which pivots occur is actually not entirely up to us and sometimes not at all up to us.